look at another algebraic method of how we can solve systems of equations. This method is called elimination. And the plan here is that somehow we can get either the coefficients of x the same or the coefficients of y the same such that we could either add or subtract to eliminate one of the variables. Let me show you what I mean here. So we'll call this equation 1, I call this equation 2. Now there's one principle that we always got to keep in mind here and that is whatever we do to one side of the equation we're allowed to do to the other side of the equation. So if I'm looking at this first equation I see a 2 as a coefficient here in front of x and equation 1, sorry equation 2 really has a 1 in front of x in here but what if I took equation 2 and just multiplied both sides of this equation by 2. So I'm going to line these up again. I'm going to rewrite equation 1 as it is. But I'm going to take equation 2 and I'm going to multiply the left side of the equation by 2 and the right side of the equation by 2. So when I multiply the left side by 2, that's 2 times 1x. So this is my new equation again. 2x, so 2 times 1x was 2x. 2 times 3y is 6y. And then I got to multiply this side also by 2, which is 10. So all I did was I just doubled equation 2, made it 2x plus 6y equals 10. Now look at what I've got. I've got two equations, equation 1 and equation 2, where the coefficients of x are the same. Now, if I take these two equations and I subtract them, so I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to subtract this equation, then Look what happens to the x's. 2x take away 2x is going to be 0x, no x. 5y subtract 6y is minus 1y equals 9 minus 10 is minus 1. So by subtracting the two equations, because I got the coefficients the same, I've eliminated one of my variables. And now I can simply solve this for y. So I just need to divide by negative 1 to get y equals negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. So I've now found out what y is. Now I just need to get the other variable x. Well, I have two equations here. I have 2x plus 5y equals 9, and I had x plus 3y equals 5. So I can pick whatever one I want here to find my other variable. I'm going to pick this first one. I'll just write it again here. It was x plus 3y equals 5 because it has the smaller coefficient so it's easier for me to work with. So I'm just going to take that y equals 1 and put it right in there. And now I have an equation where I can solve for x. So this would be x plus 3 equals 5 minus 3 from both sides to isolate x. x is 2. Again, it doesn't matter why I got, once I get my y value, y equals 1, I could have put it in this equation. I'll show you. The numbers are a bit bigger here, but we'll still get the same answer. 5 times 1 is 5. So I had minus 5 from both sides. And then divide by 2, x is 2. You see the same answer. So it doesn't matter which, whoops, we don't need that open doesn't matter which equation we put put our, our y equals 1 in for. Usually you pick the one with the smaller numbers, easier to work with. And we have our solution, 2, 1. And just like we did with the, elim, uh, the uh, substitution method, always a good idea to check your answer. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 5 times 1 is 5, 4 plus 5 is 9, and x plus 3y, 2 plus 3 times 1, so 5 equals 5. It works. All right, here's another system of equations where <clears throat> we need to isolate for x or not, sorry, not isolate for x or y. We need to eliminate either x or y. So we need to get these coefficients the same. Um, but in this case, we're going to have to multiply both equations by something. So if I look at my x, let's say I wanted to get rid of x, I could make them both 10. I'd have to multiply the top by 2 and the bottom one by 5. Or if I wanted to get rid of y, I'd have to multiply the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 3. That would get them both to be 6. So I don't know which one's particularly easier. we got to multiply 
both equations by something. I'll just choose to get rid of the x's again. So I'm going to multiply the top equation. The whole thing here has got to be multiplied by 2. And this equation, I'm going to have to multiply everything by 5. So let's get our two equations together. If I times everything here by 2, this would become 10x times this by 2, negative 6y, times this by 2 is 38. And if I times this by 5, this is negative 10x. And if I times this by 5, this is 10y. And if I times this by 5, this is negative 50. That's a minus sign there. There we go. Now we need to get rid of these two equations, or get rid of the, the x's here. So in this case, I need to actually add this equation to this equation because 10 plus minus 10 is what's going to give me 0. So if I had, if I were subtracting, this isn't going to work because 10 minus minus 10 is like 10 plus 10, which is 20x, and that wouldn't actually eliminate it. So you need to be careful. You need to find out is, do you really need to add or do you need to subtract? What operation will get rid of the variables? In this particular example, it's adding because 10 plus minus 10 is going to eliminate the x's. That'll be 0. The y's, negative 6 plus plus 10, so negative 6 plus 10 is 4 y's, and negative, uh, sorry, 38, positive 38 plus negative 50 would be negative 12, and then finally to isolate y, divide both sides by, oops, by 4, negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. So there's our y value. Um, I don't know, I'm going to go in the top equation, it has less negatives, so I'm going to take this thing and dump it in here and get my x. So 5x minus 3 times y, which I've determined to be minus 3, equals 19. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Now I need to minus 9 from both sides, so 5x equals 10 and divide by 5 gives me x equals 2. And so my point would be 2 minus 3. This would be the point where those two lines intersect. And then of course always check your answer. And we'll look at a tough one here. One that's quite quite messed up. Again it's been given in, in a bunch of fraction terms so I'm going to get rid of the fractions. I'm going to take my top equation here and I'm just going to multiply this whole thing by 3 before I even look at what I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to times this by 3 and this one if I times by 6, that's the common denominator here, that should get rid of all my fractions eventually. So timesing the first equation by 3, 3 times x is 3x, so this will be 3x over 3 minus 3 times y is 3y equals 7 times 3 is 21. And then, of course, 3 divided by 3 is just x. So this would be x minus 3y equals 21. In my second equation, when I times everything by 6, 6 times 2x is 12x over 3. 6 times 2y is 12y. And 6 times 1 oops, equals 6 times 1 is 6, 6 over 2. So timesing all the numerators by 6 gives me this, and now they should divide nicely and get rid of the fractions. 12 divided by 3, 4x plus 12y equals 3. So equation 1, equation 2. So now I've done a little bit of work to the equations look a little nicer. Now I need to decide what I'm going to do and I could take equation 1 and simply multiply it by 4. That would get my x's the same. Um, why don't we do that? Why don't we just take equation 1 times it by 4? So this would make this one 4x minus 12y equals 48. And equation 2 will still be the 4x plus 12y equals 3. So let's line them up over here. 4x minus 12y equals 48, 4x plus 12y equals 3. So this one's kind of interesting because the coefficients are actually the same here in both x and y. So if I wanted to get rid of x's, I would just need to subtract them because 4 minus 4 is 0. 
Or if I added the equations, that would end up getting rid of the y's, because negative 12 plus 12 would be 0. Um, I'm just going to subtract, get rid of the x's here. So 4x, take away 4x, no x's. Negative 12y, take away 12y, is negative 24y. And 48 subtract 3 is 45. And then just to isolate y, i got to divide everything by negative 24. And usually we would write our, our negatives up top. So negative 45 20 fourths. There would be our y value. Now we just need to get our x value. Um, so I'm going to go back and look. This was our original equation, and this was our original equation here. Those are both really messy with the fractions. So I'm going to go and look at some of the other ones I've created here. This one here looks looks really nice. So I'm going to take the x minus 3y equals 21. I'm going to choose that one to work with because it has nice small coefficients. And I'm going to now take this and dump that in here for y. So y was negative 45 20 fourths. And now I need to, to do the fraction work here. Negative 3 times negative 45 is positive 135 over 24 equals 21. And I believe we can do some reducing here. We can divide everything by 3. Yeah, I could have done this right here. Called that a 1 and called that an 8. And just left that as 45 over 8 equals 21. So reduce this fraction, divide by 3, divide by 3, 45 over 8. And now x equals 21 minus 45 eighths. So 21 is like 21 over 1. So we need to get this over 8. And 8 times 21 is 168 minus 45 over 8. Now that we have our common denominators, we can simply subtract these numerators. 123 eighths. So we have our x value, 123 over 8, and our y value, negative 45 20 fourths. Again, you'd never be able to get that using a, using a graph, but using this method of elimination, we're able to get an accurate answer for the intersection of those two lines. So given two equations, such as 2x minus 3y equals negative 11 and 3x minus 2y equals negative 4, we need to line the equations up, one on top of the other. So we've got 2x minus 3y equals minus 11 and 3x minus 2y equals minus 4. Then we need to get one of the coefficients the same. So we get to, get to choose here. I'm going to decide to multiply the top one here by 3 and the bottom one here by 2, which will get all the x values the same. So that would be 6x minus 9y equals negative 33 and 6x minus 4y equals negative 8. Now we need to either add or subtract to eliminate our variable. So in this particular example, if I subtract, that's what's going to get rid of the x's here. 6x take away 6x would be 0x. Then negative 9 minus minus, that's negative 9 plus 4, which is negative 5y and negative 33 minus minus 8, so that's negative 33 plus 8, is negative 25. And now I can solve for the variable, easy enough, divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, negative 25 divided by negative 5 is positive 5, so I've now got y, y is equal to 5. Now I can substitute the variable into any of the equations, 
and solve for the remaining variable. So I'm going to take a look. I had this one and this one to start with. I don't know, maybe the second one has has smaller numbers. So I'll take 5 and put it in here. So 3x minus 2 times 5 equals negative 4, which means 3x minus 10 equals negative 4. 3x equals 6. When we add 10 to both sides, divide by 3, we get 2. So it looks like the solution is the point, whoop, not 2, 3. Looks like the solution is the point 2, 5. But how do we know if we we're right? We check our answer. So we take the point 2, 5 and we put it into equation 1. So if x is 2 and y is 5, 2 times 2 is 4, so in equation 1 we'd get 4 minus 3 times 5 is 9, minus 15. 4 minus 15 is minus 11. That's good, that's what it's supposed to equal. And then in the second equation, when we put 2 in for x and 5 in for y, 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. 6 minus 10 is negative 4. Yes. So we know we've done it correct. So there's solving systems of equations by elimination.